Hi there. Welcome to the first episode of Little Big Knits. Um, my name is Selma. I'll be your host uh, for this podcast. And this is a podcast about knitting. Um, and I may share other crafts as well. We'll see. But I am primarily a knitter. So uh, hopefully you will enjoy what I have to share with you. Um, so you can find me on Ravelry as Selma Knits, um, as well as on Instagram. That's about the only social media that I'm actually on. And um, it's funny because I'm actually a little nervous. But anyway, we're just going to keep on going. And I think this is the third try time I've tried starting, but that's all right. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me, um, warts and all. And um, you may be here uh, because you've been looking for a podcast or maybe because uh, you watch The Two Tangled Skeins. Um, I used to podcast or I, well, I was an occasional podcaster on The Two Tangled Skeins with Sue and Lynn. Um, and I may still become an even more occasional podcaster with them. Um, but uh, I joined their podcast um, about two years ago and um, I have to say it really changed my life. So it, in, the, in, a, in a way that that and Instagram, and I have to say that Sue has always been, um, she's the one who introduced me to Ravelry and then she introduced me to podcast and then she introduced me to Instagram. So, um, and as a result of all of that, my knitting community completely changed. Joining the podcast and then joining um, the Two Tangle Skeins uh, completely changed my knitting world. Um, Ravelry had already changed it a lot. And then uh, joining the podcast and being, becoming part of the knitting community in a very different way changed it for me more. Um, and so I decided to give a try um, or try my hand at doing my own podcast for a variety of reasons. I really love podcasting with Sue and Lynn, so I kind of look forward to seeing them again, and we'll see what it's like on my own. I might find this bizarre. I already find it a little bit strange, but I thought I'm gonna give it a try anyway. Um, certainly one of the reasons is that scheduling um, three people can be a little bit challenging at times, and I have a really kind of a busy life. Um, I live here in Ottawa, and Sue lives on the Hull side, so it's not far. It's about a 20 minute drive. Um, but I've got two kids who are really active and doing a lot of different things and a husband and a busy life. And so it was just, I thought if I podcast on my own, maybe it'll create a little bit less uh, coordination, needs for coordination for me. So we'll see if that's actually the case. Um, so anyway, I thought I'd give it a go. And uh, I'm not technologically very savvy, so let's see how this goes. If this looks terrible, I apologize. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see if I can get it onto YouTube. If I do, I'm going to consider that a minor miracle um, and be very proud of myself. <laughs> but we'll see. So, um, yeah, so I have kind of already mentioned that I'm here in Ottawa and I am a mother of two kids and uh, we have a cat and uh, two rats. Um, I will not be showing the rats and uh, Yoda, our cat, is uh, a pretty independent-minded little girl so I don't know that she's going to be all over me either. But you never know, she might show up one day. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much, I think, about me. Um, I have been knitting since I was nine years old. Uh, my mom taught me, I remember very clearly sitting on her lap and her kind of behind me and kind of showing me how to manipulate the needles and um, and then I never really stopped. Uh, I start, I knit my first sweater when I was 14 and um, I remember wearing it at school all the time. It was a grey mohair sweater and I never really looked back. In my younger years, there were a lot of unfinished projects, and so I think I made a commitment at one point to be a little bit more about finishing things um, because it causes me a lot of anxiety otherwise to have things kind of floating around and I feel like I'm sort of wasting. So I'm trying really hard to always knit things and then finish them. Occasionally a project ends up in the naughty corner or ends up languishing in some way, but uh, I tend to be a little bit of a mono knitter. Um, I may have two projects on the go at a time, but it's pretty rare that I have more than three. Um, and one might be one that I pick up occasionally. So, 
For me, you can expect to see some sweaters, um, some socks, shawls, um, maybe other clothing like skirts, different things like that. So there you go. So a little less about me, I think, at this point, and maybe we can just start talking about knitting. Because the last time I was on the Two Tangled Skeins, I did share a sweater that I had finished. Um, I still had not finished the button band and all the, it's the Deco by Kate Davies. And I decided not to show that today because I still haven't finished the button band. But I hope to finish that in the next couple of weeks and then I'll be able to share that with you. But today I have two finished objects. Um, one is the socks, sock head hat. Uh, this is a free pattern on Ravelry and is had been made by, oh my gosh, I think over a thousand people. And so it's got this very long um, ribbing here at the bottom because it's meant to be folded over. So it's the, I actually made this for my daughter, but I'll model it for you. But you could do it with the, the ribbing doubled or not. My daughter, as soon as I finished this, took it, off her, took it out of my hands and pretty much put it on right away. And I almost wasn't able to show it to you guys on the podcast because she got upset that she couldn't wear it. So I'll be giving it back to her soon after. Um, but this is the Sock Head Hat by Kim McClure. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And you knit the ribbing, as I said, and then you just go to plain stocking knit stitch. So it is a fantastic pattern for a highly variegated yarn, which is what I've got here. And, um, you know, I don't remember what size needles, but I pretty well use the needles that they said in the pattern. And, um, and, and there you go. It's a lovely pattern, very easy. You can kind of adapt it to a smaller head or a bigger head if you want to by just adding or taking away the number of stitches that you cast on. Very easy. And the yarn that I use, and it's kind of funny, I was trying to decide what yarn to make socks with. And I showed my daughter this yarn, and this yarn is Skeen, um, Skeen yarn from Australia. Um, the dyer behind that is Kristen Finley. And this is in her top draw sock in the Lily Pond colorway. And I had this skein and I had a skein by Lichen and Lace in her hmm, Wildflowers colorway, I believe. And I showed them to my daughter and I said, which pair do you think would make a good pair of socks? And she took this skein and she put it on her head and she said, this would make a great hat. <laughs> so I said, all right, I got the hint. And I'm really, really glad that I turned the skein into a hat because I just think that it it just showed off the skein so beautifully. Like the colors just are so nicely distributed throughout the hat. Um, so I'm really glad, really glad that I made a hat. And it turned out really very nicely. And as I said, she's already been wearing it a lot. So, uh, so that's that. I think I'd probably make another one of those, maybe even for myself. And um, I think I've seen people do it with really highly variegated yarns but also um, with just really lush yarns like Angora's or a really gorgeous MCN because it'll just highlight the yarn so nicely because it's a very simple construction. The other FO that I have, and I was actually uh, knitting on this and then I finished it while we were traveling. We went to, um, and the hat also I made, we went to Italy for a couple of weeks with my husband and my children and I. And so I got to finish this there. But this is a shawl that I just finished uh, in Italy and then fully blocked it when I came home. Hopefully you can hear me from behind the shawl. <laughs> this is the Summer Tide Shawl by Helen Stewart. And it was designed to be a two color shawl. Um, but I saw somebody who had made it in one color uh, in a cream and I, I just loved it. I loved the different stitches and the, and the different sections of it and I thought it looked nice as well as um, a one color yarn, a one color shawl. So this is about how deep it is like that. It's, it's a lovely, it's very light and lovely and I just... I really, really like it. 
Um, and I think it's going to be a lovely shawl to have at the office because I often have shawls at the office. It's really cold with the air conditioning, especially in the summertime. Um, so this is by Helen Stewart, and uh, which I think I've already mentioned like a zillion of times. Um, I knitted on four millimeter needles. I think I used Chow Goo's. Um, it was a wonderful knit. And I have to say, Helen Stewart's patterns are written in a very interesting way. They're extremely clear, um, really well laid out. You always know where you are. And she has this interesting um, thing that she does, which you may have heard other people talk about, uh, if you watch other podcasters, where she puts the percentage of where you are as you're knitting. So you know when you're at 5%, you know when you're at 50%, you know when you're at 95%, and then there you are, you're at 100% and you're binding off. And um, which is a really great way, uh, I think, for motivating you, but also so that if you have if you wanted to do two colors and you know how much your skeins weigh and you know where you are, like you can kind of figure out how much you can use from each skein. So um, very, very much enjoyed this. Um, I'm not one to make the same shawl twice. I, I don't think I've ever made a shawl for myself twice, although I would definitely make this for somebody else. And I have a feeling my mother-in-law is gonna see the shawl and want one, <laughs> um, which I would be happy to oblige. I used a yarn that I got at Rhinebeck last year um, by the Periwinkle Sheep and she's a dyer I think in, in the state of New York um, and this colorway it's in her hmm not sure it's in her sock her sock base it was an 80 20 essentially of wool and nylon superwash wool and nylon and the colorway is called stones in the fog and it's this very sort of interesting color. I find this color kind of hard to define um, because it's not blue, it's not gray, it's not purple, um, you might call it mauve, um, but it's just a very intriguing color. I loved working with her yarn, absolutely loved it. I might buy some more if I go to Rhinebeck again next fall. Um, I bought uh, two skeins of this colorway and I also bought another skein of another colorway, which I was going to bring and show you guys, but I forgot. Um, and I made a hat for a friend and I love her yarn. Now, the interesting thing I noticed about this shawl is that I found, I'm not totally sure. Maybe if you've made the shawl, you can tell me what you think, but I am not sure that this shawl ended up as deep in my yarn to stand up a little bit kind of sits like that as it did for others I'm not a hundred percent sure when I looked at the picture sometimes it seemed to be um, a deeper shawl um, but I'm actually very happy with it I, I, I'm I think it's actually a quite a lovely depth um, but I was expecting it to be slightly deeper but this, this yarn is quite tightly twist, so it's got a bit of a bounce to it. And I think that, I think that it just kind of whoop, retracts a little bit as well. Again, even though you've blocked it and you've stretched it out to the max, um, it seems to like come back, unlike a single ply that would sort of stay there or silk that would just give it that drape. Um, I would use it again in a shawl but just keeping that in mind. And this is a shawl where you could quite easily do an extra repeat in a section to make it slightly bigger. Um, but it's actually a very nice length and um, I'm very happy with it. And I just think it's a great color. It's a really interesting color. Um, so I suspect that I'm gonna wear it quite a bit. I'm gonna be taking it to the office and I'll be wearing it there. And then probably in the fall, I'll be wearing it with my leather jacket and stuff like that. I really, really like it. And I'm really looking forward to knitting another pattern by Helen Stewart. And when I go back to Rhinebeck, I'll be going back to the Periwinkle Sheep to see if I can be tempted. I actually think this would be a fabulous sweater yarn. Um, and I've started fantasizing about buying a sweater quantity. But we'll see if that actually happens. But it's really, it's really beautiful. So that's my other 
finished object that I have to share with you today. Um, I'm just going to take a sip of my tea, actually. I'm drinking. I am drinking, thanks to Lynn, Toll Baby, I'm drinking a gigantic mug of um, some black cardamom tea by a company called, ah I think it's the Ahmed Teas. And she bought me a huge box of the loose leaf cardamom tea. And so when I'm at home, I have myself a big cup in the mornings. So, so that's what I'm having. <clears throat> So, what am I working on right now? I am working on, in this, I love this bag. It's actually too big for the project, but I just don't care. This is a bag by Buku. Her first name is Aruna, and she is a textile and bag artist, I'm going to call her, out of Toronto. And I got this at the Frolic Festival in Toronto, at the end of April but I actually have two other bags by her smaller pouches one that I've used for sock knitting and one that I actually use for makeup um, I just her fabrics they're they're lovely canvases her prints are beautiful absolutely love this and it's kind of like a tote bag and it's just so gorgeous that I would use it for other stuff as well so that might end up happening but right now in here is a test knit that I'm doing for Marsha Ebuki so I'm not going to show much of it and I actually haven't gotten very far in it yet um, so I'll just show it show the colors to you so that you can see what it's going to be like if you follow her on Instagram or on Ravelry her name is fairy little on Instagram and I think there's an underscore between the two <clears throat> um, I think she's already posted pictures of it but I, I, I won't share it just because I don't want to end up doing something I'm not supposed to um, but there are three colors. So this one, this purple, and you're going to notice I might have a little thing for purple, especially kind of dusty looking purples and mauvey type colors. Um, this is a the Plucky Knitter, which actually a friend of mine, a knitting friend here from Ottawa Crystal, gave me when we were on our way to Rhinebeck. She was just giving people yarn uh, before we even got to Rhinebeck. And so this is the Plucky Feet, which is, I think, a 9010 uh, Superwash Merino and Nylon. It's in their P's and Q's uh, colorway. This is uh, Artie Yarns, which is actually based in New York. And I got it um, at a small town just near Rhinebeck. I think it was called Tivoli. And we went there to a yarn store, and I ended up buying that there. And that is... Um, their Merino Cloud Base, which is an MCN, uh, Merino Cashmere Nylon Base, and it's color 249. Not a very interesting name, but it's it's sort of a, a beigey color. And this is a three color shawl. So my third color is this one here, which is Hedgehog Fibers um, in their sock base. And the colorway is urchin, so it's this. It's speckled with purples and pinks and very dark purples. That almost look like blacks at times. So I'm hoping I haven't actually added that yet. These two are in there and they look great together. But I think it's going to be nice. I hope so because that was my intention. Um, and uh, it's also a crescent-shaped shawl. And I'll just show you. A little bit of some of the stripe. There's a tiny bit of striping in the shawl. And that um, will be done for the end of June. She's going to be publishing her pattern, I believe, at the end of June, or certainly the test knitting is meant to be done for the end of June. I think she may be publishing it a little bit later. Um, but um, that's really fun. Really fun. So thank you, Marcia, for letting me test knit for you. Um, the other thing that I'm working on is a sweater and um, I've got a little gray monster cat her name is Yoda she's at the back door over there staring at me and kind of screaming at me but I think I'm just gonna let her be there for, for now maybe she'll get bored because um, I haven't quite figured out all the technological things and I know if I stop the video and I do a second video I'm like oh how am I gonna put those together so I'm just gonna forge ahead so I made a sweater 
probably, I think it was four years ago, actually. I think it was 2013, um, and we're uh, in 2017 now. It, what is the date today? The 11th, I think, of June. Um, and uh, I made a sweater by Kim Hargreaves, who is a British designer, and she puts together these books. Her books are stunning, absolutely stunning books. And this is The Whisper. Uh, book and the pattern that I made from this book and I thought about wearing it today so you could see what it looked like but it is really hot here today like really hot and it is a long sleeved sweater so this is the sweater it's uh, a boat neck it's a very wide boat neck I made it slightly less wide um, and it's also um, kind of like it's it's straight down so it's a little bit of a boxy type look and I made it slightly tapered so that it was a little bit narrower at the hips and then got wider uh, for that drop shoulder look. And I made this out of a cotton bamboo blend in a sort of a, a gray blue colorway and I wear it a lot. And I actually wore it to Toronto in May for the frolic. And at the end of the trip, I just thought, I just really like this sweater and, and it's, it's in good shape still, even though I've worn it a lot, but there's a tiny little bit of fraying on it or not fraying but just it seems like the yarn is fluffing slightly i often wear this big necklace with it and it's showing a bit of the damage from the necklace at the top and i just thought oh my gosh what if i can't wear this sweater one day what am i going to do because i love it so much so i thought well maybe it's time to make another one so that is exactly what i'm doing i started this while i was in italy oh look at that i'm mid-row there you go First time podcaster, not so good. I am making it in this green color and really it's it's the kind of thing that doesn't really look like anything until after because right now, every once in a while you have to do these rows where you are double wrapping the yarn around the needle and then you drop them. So they're drop stitch rows. And um, I think once this has been washed and, and, the, and the weight of the cotton allows it to hang, then it'll be it'll just straighten out and flatten out the, um, the uh, slip stitch rows. But right now it's not looking fantastic and I was a little worried, but I think it's gonna be great. And because it's this sort of, it's not looking as olive on screen, but there's a little bit of an olive green to it. I kind of feel like it's sort of gonna to add to the, it's not camouflage, but you know, kind of like the look. I think it'll be fine. I'm really excited about it. Um, but I really haven't had a whole lot of time to knit since we got back from our trip a week. We got back uh, a week and a half ago. Um, it's been very hectic and stuff going on. So yesterday, like I literally knit, I think a row and a half. That's as much as I was able to do on a Saturday because it ended up being a very busy day. But I'm really enjoying it. I am knitting it out of, I think three and a half millimeter needles. Um, and I'm just, I'm half, I'm halfway up a row, but it's actually the back. I'm going up the back now. I've split at the armpits, uh, or I've split for the sleeves, which would be a more elegant way of saying it. And I'm just going up the back. This sweater originally is meant to be a, um, pieced sweater. I would say that the majority of Kim Hargreaves patterns are pieced. Um, but I made the first one and this one in the round and then I just split up here and then I did I picked up for the sleeves as well. I try to avoid sewing as much as I can because I just don't really like it very much. So I am making this out of a yarn I had gotten at a local wool shop called Wool Time. Um, it was on in their sort of sale section and it's a diamond luxury yarn called Maya and it's essentially a mercerized cotton. Actually it was interesting they say here they said 100% comb bed mercerized double gassed cotton. I don't know enough about techniques to know what that means exactly um, but I have enjoyed working with it. It's a little bit splitty um, I have to say uh, so I have to be careful because it's made up of many strands of very, very thin cotton. And you know, like if, if you miss a strand and it's, it's gonna have an impact on the finished look of the sweater. So um, I'm trying really hard to make sure that I don't miss any of the strands. 
So that's what I'm working on and I'm hoping to have both the shawl and this sweater finished by June. We'll see by the end of June, we'll see what happens. Because then I have to figure out what I want to knit next. And I think my daughter kind of figured it out for me. My daughter loves receiving hand knits and I would say that she has just about always worn them. Unfortunately, when she was younger, she also lost them. Um, so that was sometimes a little bit frustrating. I made her a gorgeous uh, little shrug at one point and she absolutely loved it. And I think it was actually stolen at, at school. Um, but she's always worn everything and loved them. So she's fairly knit worthy. And I think as she gets older, she's even more knit worthy. And so next I'm planning on making a sweater for her. Uh, she wanted to have kind of a boxy sweater. She asked if I could make her um, something kind of cropped and a little bit wider, but not like crazy wide, just a little bit. Um, so I'm planning on making her a sweater. I don't know that I'm gonna make it quite as cropped as she wants it to be, but um, hopefully she'll be pleased with it anyway. So yesterday uh, was a Worldwide Knit in Public Day. So happy Worldwide Knit in Public Day if you did it. Good for you. I was a lamo, and as I said, I knit like a row and a half yesterday. Um, it was a gardening day. I really, really needed to plant vegetables because we were getting a little late in the season. And um, so I spent a lot of time outside and then we had dinner with friends and stuff like that. But the garden plot that we have is very close to a wool shop in town called Wool Time. And uh, we have a garden here, but it's just not sunny enough. So we always have this garden plot and it just happens to be like not quite around the corner, but fairly close. So uh, I said to Isla, listen, they are having a worldwide knit in public sale on all their summer yarns. Should we go see if we find anything for you? So we walked in and the first thing she saw and the first thing she fell in love with and there was no changing her mind was this stuff by Katya called Spring Rainbow, which is this kind of cotton gradient. Um, and actually there are local dyers who do this stuff too, so I'm feeling a little bad for buying a big commercial one. Um, but this was the one she wanted. And she wanted something cotton-like for the summer. These are usually used for making uh, for making shawls and things like that. I didn't see any pictures or examples at the store, but I haven't checked on Ravelry yet for sweaters made out of such a yarn. So I've ended up buying two of these. And of course she likes this wild and crazy color. Like, I don't think I would wear this, but um, I had to buy two because there isn't quite enough meterage, I suspect. For her, there are 600 and something yards, 656 yards on here, but I think she's probably for a sweater. She wants it to have sleeves. I think we're probably gonna need more around 800 yards. That's my guess, because at this point, she's 10 and she is probably in like a female extra small. Um, so I ended up buying two. And so I'll be sort of putting together some sort of a boxy sweater for her. And I think I'm just gonna base it on my Paloma, which I'm knitting for myself, and a similar structure. I don't think I'm going to bother looking for a pattern. But the issue that I have with this is that um, I would normally knit a sweater in the round, whereas considering the structure of this yarn and such, I think I'm going to have to actually seam it. I think I'm going to have to do a front and a back and probably use these two simultaneously for the front and the back and then use the leftovers for the sleeves um, and that way the color distribution will be kind of nice and make more sense that's what I'm thinking I'm gonna need to do so I have the rest of the month of June to sort of figure out how I want to do this um, but I think in July I'll be knitting her this sweater um, I have a last couple of things I'll share with you. Um, another yarn purchase and a magazine um, before I sign off for today. 
Uh, so when we went to the store, they were having a sale on summer yarns, as I said, right? When we were in Italy, I really didn't go and even look for yarn stores. It was a family vacation. Um, I don't know. I just didn't really think about doing it. But I did go into one yarn store in Venice uh, that is has got a little bit of a reputation with uh, a good reputation with a podcasters. I know Kristen of Wollenbein talk, talked about going there and so did Eric of Sticks Plus Twine. So I thought, okay, well, I'll go check out Lilla Bella, it's called, in Venice. So I found it walked in, saw the yarn, they both got in cashmere from there, it was really gorgeous, but I just wasn't, that just wasn't what I was wanting. And they had an unusual mix of yarns, I have to say. Uh, a lot of Katia Yarns, which is this, this company, because I believe that Katia is a Spanish company. It is a Spanish company, but apparently a lot of their yarns are from Italy. Sorry, I've got something, a fiber or something that's got up my nose. And um, so they had a lot of Katia and a lot of Filatura di Crosa, which is an Italian company. And they had a lot of um, really shimmery yarns or very, uh, you know, fancy schmancy yarns or what do we call those yarns? Are they variety yarns or, or um, you know, ones that can have little things hanging off of them or... Uh, you know, they're highly mixed with viscose or different things and um, acrylics. There were some beautiful mohairs and I have a little bit of a, a thing for mohair. Um, there was one yarn that I really liked. Uh, it was kind of a viscosey blend. It was very shiny, but I was like, that could make a really interesting top. But I just wasn't ready to splurge and it was the kind, they weren't balls. They were, you know, the ones where there's like a, a cardboard on the inside and the yarn is wrapped. So they were actually kind of big like not as big as this but kind of big and I didn't have a lot of space in my suitcase and I thought well if I have to buy eight of these how am I going to fit them into my suitcase so I thought I said I'll think about it the woman was lovely in the store we had a lovely funny conversation I would say trying to speak Italian English Spanish which I speak and trying to like but we were communicating beautifully it was really fun and I said you know what I'm going to think about it and I'll come back tomorrow and the next day when I went the store was closed for lunch and I thought okay that's a sign because I still wasn't totally sure whether I should get it or not but yesterday when we walked into wool time they had a yarn not the same yarn a yarn by Barocco but that looked exactly like that yarn similar kind of texture not similar colors but also as shimmery and as lovely and it's the and I think it's actually a new yarn by Barocco it's called Barocco Mykonos and it's a linen, nylon, and cotton blend. And it's a very shimmery yarn. And that would be the nylon that is doing that. Um, and it's in this stunning, well, I found it stunning because I just love steely kind of bluey grays. So I ended up buying a sweater quantity and my idea is to make a little tee. It's going to be one of those tops that's just really cool when it is 35 degrees and humid, which is the kind of day that we're going to have today. Um, it's just going to be a light, you know, little v-neck, slightly off the shoulders top, very simple. So I bought enough to do that. And I'm not sure, I might get to that in August, we'll see. We'll see how quickly I'm able to get through my, my, daughter's, uh, my daughter's sweater. I'm a little bit of a planner um, and I tend to stick to my plan. <laughs> I do have a lot of fun planning my knitting, um, and normally I I wouldn't be quite as as uh, rigid about okay I got to make the sweater in July, but because my daughter wants it, I figure you know I should get on that, and she'll be able to wear that in to September and October as well. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about is the new issue of making magazine. Oh, I find it hard to call this a magazine. This is more like a book. It's so beautiful. I have gotten number one, number two, and now number three. Number one was lovely. Number two, I have to say, I wouldn't call it disappointing, but it just there just wasn't as much in there that I thought I would really want to make. Um, but number three is stunning. And each of their issues has a theme. 
and the theme for this one is dots. And so there are a lot of patterns, even actually this one, which is by Heidi Kiermeyer, as you can see, she's got kind of baubles in the in the the yoke of the sweater. So the patterns are primarily blue and they include things like dots. So there's this fabulous pair of socks. What I love about this magazine is certainly the quality, like it is a beautiful, kind of like Len magazine, which maybe you're familiar with. It's just got a beautiful quality. But what I really am enjoying about this magazine is that, in fact, the whole first part of the magazine has nothing to do with knitting. There's a lot of sewing and embroidery and a little bit of baking. And uh, here there's a section on doing French knots, for example. So I just love that it is really about making and it's actually motivating. You know, let's say you are just a cross stitcher or you are just a sewer or just a knitter. It's going to push you in other directions and you kind of go, oh, I'd like to make that. That's really pretty. Um, there are, even the picture on the back, there are these um, pin cushions that have embroidery in them. There's just very interesting projects in here with the patterns given. There's some piecework, and again, all with dots. I happen to love circles and swirls, so uh, this also spoke to me. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really beautiful, and I am very glad I got it, because I was kind of considering not getting it, but then I decided to. And I think the next one that they have coming out in the fall is Lines. So uh, I think I've already ordered it. Um, they're really beautiful and I'll look at them over and over again. And there are definitely some things that I want to make in here um, in terms of knitting this cardigan, which is not blue. <laughs> it's by Hannah Fittig, just stunning. So if I come across the fingering weight yarn that I need for it that just speaks to me, I think I would love to make that. It's such a pretty, simple, cropped cardigan. And there's some fantastic color work by Tin Can Knits, by one of the people at Tin Can Knits, Emily Wessel. So just full of, full of really beautiful things. There's, if you're a crocheter, these gorgeous rocks that have crocheting over them. I mean, they're just... So there are things that are practical, things that are whimsical, things that are romantic, just beautiful. It's just a lovely, lovely collection. So I'm really glad I bought it. And I think that comes to the end of my first episode. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I can't tell you how often I'm going to, to podcast. Um, I'm not going to podcast on a weekly basis. Um, hopefully every two or three weeks or whenever um, I can um, that's what I hope to do and um, so uh, if you want to feel free to subscribe in YouTube it's unlikely to have any sort of fanfare around it or banner or anything yet because I just decided to do this but I'm probably a little bit behind on all the other things to start this off um, I haven't started a group in Ravelry yet, but I will be doing that. Um, if not by the time the podcast has aired, then sometime in the next few days. Um, feel free to subscribe on YouTube uh, to see when the next one comes out so you get a notification. Or, um, yeah. Feel free to contact me on Ravelry if you have uh, any questions or comments and um, or in YouTube and um or on instagram uh and well i guess we'll see you the next time enjoy your crafting whatever it may be and um we'll see you next time take care bye-bye i'm just gonna